Yo guys, it's Tony TV here back again for another YouTube video. So I was going to kind of make this a scripted video, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and wing it because I did come up with an uh, outline of what I wanted to discuss, but this video is going to be on the Silent Hill 2 remake and whether it's a masterpiece and to give you my verdict towards the end. So I'm going to go through and give you my first impressions and the overall appeal of the game, the characters, the cinematic scenes, the main areas in the game, boss fights, combat puzzles, and then a variety of other things that were added or remain the same, such as collectibles and Easter eggs, and then game endings. And then I'll give you my conclusion followed by the verdict. So first we'll talk about my first impressions with the opening of the game. So I thought that I was just really excited to get into it because we've been waiting so long for this game and it took forever for them to like kind of start, start like promoting this game. And I was, I was wondering when they were going to start doing it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people were like, when are, when is Blue River team, when is Konami going to like push the button and be like, Hey, let's, let's look at more gameplay and all that stuff. And I'll, I'll be honest, it was, it was really shaky in the beginning because we got some, some clips and some first impressions that weren't so good. It just looked bad. It looked unpolished. The cutscenes uh, or the way they edited the videos weren't good. It just didn't give a really good taste in a lot of our mind, a lot of our minds. And so I do agree that it didn't look so great. And there were a lot of issues, um, especially with like the, the whole wokeness nowadays with games. And there's a lot of like things coming to games that we never asked for. And we see that in, in Ubisoft game, for example, uh, we saw that Star Wars Outlaws. Um, people will complain that why do we have to play a female character? Why can't we create our own character? It's a, it's literally an open world game. Can't we just create our own character? Um, not saying that having a female character is bad. It's just that why do we just need to have a fixed female character? But then again, I would be shooting myself in the foot if I were to say that weren't hypocritical because most games have been male protagonists. So there, there are begs to be an argument for those that deserve a female but getting off a little, a little off topic what i would like to say is that there's a lot of wokeness in games and so a lot of people are paranoid that you know new ga newer games coming out are just being influenced by these companies that really have no business in being vid in video games let's just be honest they don't like there's no reason for it uh if the companies are using them because they're afraid they're going to offend uh their audience or they want to make sure that it's politically correct that's kind of you know bullshit in a sense like you shouldn't have to worry about um about that I'm cracking open a bubbly real quick one second i gotta drink my uh my bubbly seltzer water but um yeah i just don't really agree with that and i didn't really agree that blue routine had to bring in remedy or hit detection whatever it was for silent hill 2 remake i i don't really cover much into that in my previous videos but i would like to talk about it because i i feel like it's it's safe to to open up kind of like a little bit my doors so, so you guys can see how i think about this situation i just think it's complete and utter bullshit and that none of this should really be a thing. If if you are really afraid of offending certain people, they sh they should have no business in being playing these games in the first place. They can literally just choose not to use their credit card to buy the game. That's plain and simple. They can move on to something else that they want to play. Um, but I didn't really see that in in Silent Hill Two Remake. Uh, when when I went through and played the whole game, there wasn't anything that that stood out to me. People will will still argue that you know Angela had an outfit that didn't wasn't the same from the original. Well, that's not the purpose of a remake. The purpose of a remake is to put a little twist and flavor to it. They kept it very similar to the original in, in, in regards to color scheme and still making it look look the part of the character, right? And they also used a lot of the influences in the early concept art of Angela from Ito in the original Silent Hill, old Silent Hill, old Silent, whatever, team, team Silent Hill, whatever. Um, But they... They did a good job in doing that. I think that it was really good that they kind of showed us a different parallel of Silent Hill 2, to be honest. I think it was cool to see it different. And I, it took me a while to grow on James Sutherland's jacket because his patches weren't there. I really didn't like that they removed them, but there was really no purpose to it. It was just more of a nostalgic piece, and I always thought the patches were cool in his jacket. So, yeah, main menu for the first impressions. The main menu, settings, interface, and loading screen. So the main menu looked really good. I like the bathroom scene. I wish they kind of like had like a song, a soundtrack playing or something playing. It was just kind of like, uh, it sounded like a bathroom. It just sounded very quiet and you can kind of hear a little bit of, of ambiance, which is, which is fine. It's just, I, I was kind of expecting some type of music it would have been cooler. Um, settings, there was a plethora of settings, which I had said in my previous video from update. 
updated information from the lead developer, Matt Leonard, um, that they were going to have all these options. And I really love that. I love that they cater to people who with the dyslexia, and then they also cater to the people with visual and audio impairments. And I think that was a really good addition to the game interface and um, loading screen. So the in interface plays throughout the game. Um, so it's the things you see on the screen, what you, how you interact with things. I think everything was smooth. They added enough but not too much to make the game feel overall really good. The loading screen was cool. I did like the tips. And then they also added in the beginning or when you're loading into a game, the footsteps and um, press any button. It just looked really clean and I enjoyed that. the overall appeal. So talking about the environment, um, the environment looked really immersive. It just looked, it just looked and felt really great. It felt like I was inside the environment. Um, when it rained, you get the haptic feedback through the controller. So you felt the rain hitting the controller. So again, immersiveness was, was top notch in this game. The visuals were stunning using unreal engine five to its max capability. I think that was a smart move. It really did show inside this game, especially when playing on quality mode. I think we got the most out of it on PlayStation 5. A little bit better on PC, but PlayStation 5 still captured most of it. And the performance didn't drop too much in certain areas here and there whenever you're turning right or left. You can kind of see a little bit of a stutter um, with the drop in. I think it would be drop in frame rates. I'm not too savvy on that stuff, but it kind of felt a little, little, little janky at times. But most of the time it was, it was, it was smooth. And I was kind of worried about that when before playing the game because I thought maybe if there were multiple nurses in a room or multiple things uh, that I would, you know, be see a drop in performance or the game might freeze up. But I didn't get any of that. No game crashes, no freezing, nothing. So I thought that was uh, very good that they did that. I think there was one part where I kind of like went up on an object and went back into an object. And it was a a bug inside of the hotel towards the end of the game and i got stuck so i had to reload that one time but that was the only time i really had any issues again the atmosphere looked great and felt great and the music top performance of the whole thing the whole thing akira yamoka back at it again coming coming with us coming adding in like new flavors and everything he did a really great job uh with that and I think he brought back a lot of nostalgic pieces while, as well as new things. And Bloober Team also kind of added in. They recorded new sounds and, and, and things for the environment and how James interacts or him just if he's simply just crushing something or breaking something. Um, you could actually it actually sounded really it sounded realistic. There we go. That's the word um, going into characters. So I won't I really don't want to go too much into it because there's so much I can say, but I'll, I'll kind of briefly go through. So. Comparing them to the original, I would say that we'll go in one by one. So Eddie Munson, I feel, did I just say Eddie Munson? I meant fucking Eddie uh, Dombrowski or whatever. Uh, I'm thinking of Stranger Things right now. Sorry. Uh, but, but yeah, for Eddie Dombrowski, I think that they did a phenomenal job. The voice actor and the motion capture actor did a really good job in in showing uh, the true nature of Eddie. They made him a lot more bizarre in the remake. In the original, he was still scary, but... And the um, remake, they made him um, pretty crazy. So uh, the boss fight with him was good. Uh, they they added, I think there was like three phases to his boss fight. So that was something that surprised me. They didn't have that in the original. The original, you had technically two phases. Because in the first scene in the remake, um, you see James punch him um, right before the boss fight. Uh, but in the original, he never punched him. You kind of were in that same room where he like... In the cutscene where he tries to, he doesn't. He so in the remake, Eddie goes into gets into James's face, and that's when James punches him. But in the in the original, um, you don't see that with Eddie. Eddie just kind of pulls out his gun and shoots James. But it somehow it was a weird scene because it it was janky. But like it looked like James, I think, had dodged the bullet or some shit, kind of like Neo from the Matrix. But he like dodged his bullet, and then after that happened, uh you kind of fight Eddie and that's in that little small room and you like kind of like hit him with a stick and then he eventually runs off into the other room and then on the second it kind of played the same as it did in the remake where there's a bunch of um uh dried meat or frozen meat like on hangers inside of a room but they don't rotate at all like they do in the remake they just sit there and then you just have to you have to just like shoot at Eddie and Eddie will constantly come, come and run at you every couple seconds to try and attack you in the original, but in the remake, he doesn't really do that unless you get up into his face. 
or you keep on hiding from him, then he'll come after you. So I, I thought the comparison was pretty interesting. For Laura, uh, I think that Laura's actress did a phenomenal job. I think she did great. I thought the voice acting was great, and there's really no complaint with with uh, Laura. I think maybe there were certain things here and there where they made her a little bit more of a brat in the remake, and people will complain about that. But overall, I think she served her purpose, and she seemed fine. For Angela, again, she looked great. Uh, a lot of people complain about the way she looks. She should look a little bit more skinny, blah, blah, blah. But I, I, that's feeding to some, uh, type of unrealistic expectation that, that if they want to play, if they want to see Angela a certain way, they go play the original. Uh, this is a remake. It doesn't have to be the exact same model because that has nothing to do with who she was. It had to do with what we learned from her and her story. And I think we learned a lot of it. And what I would say is the peak boss fight of the game, the best boss fight, um, what they what bloober team nailed was angela's boss fight uh the, the abstract daddy um but it basically portrays uh, the abusive relationship she had with her uh father and with her brother and the broken household and alcoholic father that she had and you go through and basically live her experience and it was a very groundbreaking it really like touched me generally like in per personally it just really hit because I understood exactly how she was living her life and it was horrible. And you get to see a part where you run into a little uh, closet what has her teddy bear and blanket, which was very heartbreaking because that was her when she was a little girl getting abused and that was her safe spot. And she, all she had was her little teddy bear to come, which was really sad. And then and if you haven't picked it up, if you played through the boss fight, there is a part where you get to actually run into this one room. And I, they have it on multiple rooms though. Uh, where you have a dresser and on top of the dresser was two whiskey bottles and if you didn't pick that up go back and play it again because the whiskey bottles represents the drinks that her father was drinking and and got out of control and started attacking her um and then another cool uh interesting thing that i looked up on twitter which is not confirmed but there's a there was a part of abstract daddy where he had flesh that was red and so there was a there's some symbols symbolism to that well, there's probably a correct answer to this, which I don't know because Ito likes to be very um, abstract with his answers or and doesn't give any type of um, indication of what the inspiration or what the meaning of it is and leaving it up for inter interpretation. But my interpretation is that when someone is drinking a heavy amount of alcohol, they get flushed in the face, their skin turns red, the blood and the vessels are opened up so the blood flows more towards the surface of the skin and that turns the skin red. Well, an alcoholic would have the same thing. And so her dad was an alcoholic. The skin was red. So that represents alcoholism in the in the father. And it could represent maybe the flames or the burning um, that I don't know. Like there's other meanings that people come up with, but that's my interpretation. And I'm going to stand with that one. Um, so that's enough for Angela. Angela was perfect. I loved her. Uh, they did a really great job and they added new, new, new cutscenes for her. So I thought that was really cool. They expanded upon her story and gave her the justice she needed. Um, and then I would like to talk about the last part with angela going up the steps in the fire uh i do have some concerns because i know that there were other people that had concerns too i didn't i i thought it was okay but again like it could have been a little bit more fleshed out especially her walking upstairs into the flames i was talking with one of my good friends uh this that that runs the silent lounge youtube channel and if you haven't heard of him go check him out he's doing amazing great things with silent hill i just had a little podcast discussion with him about the the remake and whether they should make a Silent Hill 1 remake next. So definitely go check out this guy. He's a really cool dude. Um, and you won't go wrong by watching his videos. Um, but for but for her going up the steps, he had brought up that, you know, I wish they had, you know, watch, sh shown her like go up or actually have James like cut from the cutscene to be able to see her walking up the steps and disappearing. Because then the original you could see that. And I think it gives more of a um more, uh, a bigger effect to her character and what happened to her. And it kind of leaves the players watching her go into like oblivion. And it's really sad. But I think it, that had a, a, an emotional impact that we didn't see in the remake. And it's kind of sad how they cut that out. But it's okay. I, I don't think that it ruined everything. And he would agree too. But it, I think that they could have kept some things the same, you know. And so that was for Angela. Um, But then now going into Maria. Again, Maria with her outfit. If they had kept it the same, I wouldn't have had an issue. But 
in changing it, they didn't, I didn't have an issue as well because what I said in my previous videos that if they keep her flirtatious personality and how she says things and how she comes across to James the same or similar, the story won't, it won't affect the story. And some people would disagree and say that, you know, keeping her, um, her outfit the same is the way to go. And I don't agree with that because I don't think that just seeing somebody for the horror or judging a book by its cover, like everyone did this remake saying it was going to fail. I don't think that's the way to look at it. You got to look into the details of it. You got to, you got to really dig and see what's really, what's this person really about? Because I feel like you could say that you go apply the same argument to, let's say you go on a Tinder date and you, you literally say this, this is the perfect woman, right? Just by looking at her picture, man, I'm going to go out with this girl. She's going to be my, she's going to be my wife. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not going on Tinder looking for a wife. They're probably going on there just to have some fun. That's all I'm going to say. But like what I'm saying is that you can't judge a book by its cover. You got to look at how they, how, how, like I look at the details. So for a person, like how do they act? Are they consistent? What are they saying? How are they saying it? What type of man mannerisms are they using? People don't like to be complex about things, but life is complex. There are a lot of complexities and a lot of things. People won't want to talk about it. They just want to take things for face value. I mean, if you want to do that, you can live that life, but that's not how the world works. And so for for Maria, I mean, you got to look at how she's acting. Now, if they kept if they made her a deadbeat character in this remake and they removed the outfit on top of that, then, yeah, there would be probably nothing to her and it would be ruined. But that's enough for Maria. I'm not, I'm not going to keep going on, on that. I thought I thought Maria was fine. Um, James, obviously, a uh, spectacular performance is, uh, Luke Roberts did a great job. I think he crushed it and, uh, he's going to go on to do great things with other games too. Maybe we'll make, we'll, we'll, we'll make him come back and do, uh, do a reappearance or something on, in one of the Silent Hill games. We, you never know. Um, and then I think that's pretty, that pretty much covers it. I don't think there's any other characters if I missed one. Um, my bad, but that's pretty much it. Um, for the cinematic scenes, I'll go into what I didn't cover in the characters, which was the visual ca facial capture. So I think the cinematic scenes really captured the facial animations of these characters and the emotions that were brought out within the characters. And I really love to see that. And the cinematic scenes just were phenomenal. I think that they did a great job. They added some new stuff. Uh, I know they added a line to the uh, Mary letter on one of the, in the ending cutscene. Um, and it's towards the beginning, if you haven't noticed. But go back and reread the letter and compare it to the original. They they changed up one like one or two lines. Um, and I don't think it was necessary, but I, that's just me. Maybe it was just a mistake or something. Um, for the main areas of the game, so I'll, I'll go through the main areas and then I'll kind of keep it simple for each, but. I'll tell you what my favorite one was as well. So uh, in the main areas of Silent Hill 2 remake and in the original pretty much is that you had the opening area where James comes to the town. He's right out of the outskirts of town and he he parks inside of like this the rest stop area it looks like with a bathroom and a sign and it's like a it's near like a tunnel bridge that goes out to old silent hill which was 50 miles out from new silent hill so old silent hill was from silent hill one and then new silent hill which they don't call it here they call it well they have kaluka lake and then they have another name for it i think it's like paleville or paleville or vale or something like that they call it east of south vale or whatever um yeah i definitely butchered that name but you guys know what i'm talking about Anyways, yeah, so there's that main opening area, which is very iconic. That's where we start the game. And then you go into the trail leading to the town. And the trail leading to the town, I uh, would say, well, I'd say for the opening area, I think they did a phenomenal job. They kept it pretty much one-to-one, -one, so that was good there. For the, and I'm glad they did not change the vehicle. The vehicle is iconic itself, and they kept it the same, which I was happy about. The trail leading to the town, they changed. They made it shorter. They did not add the scary sound effects or the growling or whatever from the original. So if you guys want a true horror experience, I think the original, and I'll, I will say this, the original was, uh, I feel, scarier than the remake. That I'm going to put that out there and say that it was. The remake did have jump scares. It was scary at times, but it didn't give that scariness that the original made. Uh, and I can get into that later. But uh, yeah, so the trail into the town was kind of a disappointment for me. It looked good, but it wasn't scary like it used to be. The town looked great. The fog was great. Uh, they added new th new buildings, new things you can go and find. They added new puzzles where you can go find new uh, pieces at certain locations. I thought the 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 apartments in the beginning in the town, I thought that the ones that they added down towards the south side, the Saul apartments or whatever, I thought that was a really cool addition. I thought that was fun. There's actually a part in that you have to go over to that building to get the UFO ending. So I think that adding that addition and then kind of changing it up, I thought that was really cool. The apartments. So this is the first bit, basically the main 
of the three big areas in the Silent Hill 2 game. And the apartments themselves was beefed up like heavily. So in the original, it wasn't as it was a lot shorter than it is in the remake. There were there were less to, there was less to do. Um, though they did keep the apartments, so apartments was split up into Woodside and Blue Creek apartments. Um, there's there's technically two parts to the to the apartments themselves. The the remake beefed them up, and I thought I thought that, I thought that was a fine fine thing to do. It was just very frustrating when I did it for, uh did it on hard on my first playthrough because I kept dying a lot and it was really frustrating and I was kind of just like wanting the apartments part to end, but it kind of went on for a while and I was like oh my god this is dragging on. And I did see articles where they were talking about the pacing for this game. And I, I, I thought the pacing was fine when I played it again on easy. Like I got through the 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 spaces pretty or the areas pretty fast. But on hard mode, you're you're gonna be spending a lot of time in these areas, especially the apartments. Like I just kept on going and going and going and I thought there was no end. But um I did like how they changed up um the the animations and everything and the puzzle itself, they changed the puzzle for the coin box. They made it a multi-part puzzle where in the original you would just literally solve whatever was written and then you put them in. And for each of the levels, it would just change the the type of uh riddle that was written on the puzzle box. But in this one, you have three um three things you have to lock on the puzzle box. So three different um verb um riddles that you have to unlock. And it stays the same for easy, uh normal, or we can, they call it light, normal, and hard. They keep they keep it with the three unlockable um riddles, but they just get progressively harder in riddle form for like the harder you go. So that's pretty much it for the apartments. I thought the apartments looked great and it felt great. Um what definitely wasn't as scary as the original. The original was a little bit more claustrophobic. Uh, for the apartment, uh, sorry, not the apartments. Uh, Rosewater Park. So Rosewater Park was, I would say, it was it was it was it was a lot better looking than it was in the original, obviously because of the new graphics. But they added some new cutscenes in the in the park. I in the Rosewater Park, especially with Angela. Later on in the game, you get a new cutscene with her in there, which I thought was surprising. I was like, wait, what? And uh, they changed the location where you meet Maria. Originally, you would just meet her on the pier on the rail. But this one, you meet her like, like you get to walk down to a pagoda out in out in the water somewhere, and that's where you met her. I also like how they actually have water now at the park, and it's not just like an empty translucent pool of nothing like they did in the original because of graphical error <laughs> or rendering. Um, but that was always left as a meme. I feel like that was a uh, that was fun in the in the original. Uh, but yeah, so that's the Rosewater Park. I thought that was cool. There's not much to the Rosewater Park. It's just kind of a place where you go back twice in the game, and that was pretty much it. Uh, the hospital. I thought the hospital looked freaking beautiful, especially with the lighting in the beginning. There's a uh, something I read on uh Ito's uh Twitter saying that Matt and the Bloober team wanted to talk them into having the expressing the importance of the lighting inside the hospital and how it was like kind of. Like, the sun coming in a lot of people are like oh they shouldn't have the sun coming in it's not that's not what Silent hill is it's supposed to be dark well you gotta you gotta understand that um in the original the hospital didn't have any lights from the outside it was just a complete dark like building with technically just didn't feel like the building itself had any windows well they have windows and they should have sunlight coming through and you couldn't tell if it was day or night i think uh entering the hospital in the original i think it was it was just silent hill kind of like daylight it was foggy um and then you obviously get to the darker world and it, or the other world and it's darker um but yeah they they portrayed that really well in the in the remake and i, I thought the hospital was beautiful the puzzles were great they added new ones and they were I, my favorite puzzle actually came from the hospital uh with unlocking the the um key where you have like to put wristbands on an arm and then it breaks I thought that was a very intricate puzzle with the bookshelves, and I I I think that was my favorite one throughout the whole game. I I love that one. It was a really fun addition, and it's really tricky to come up with new puzzles and puzzles at least that are abstract in Silent Hill world. And they I think Bloober Team nailed it. The other world was actually really terrifying, probably the most terrifying part for me. I thought surprisingly because I thought historical society or the prison would be scary, but it, I would say the other world was a lot scarier for me because I played on hard. And I came across those nurses multiple times, man. And going on hard against those nurses, it's it's very it's it's very hard to dodge every hit. So I was getting my ass beat uh, in the other world, and it it, it was it was really scary because at some at times it would be quiet, and you'd be just left in the uh, alone in the middle of the street in darkness. It's it was it was pretty creepy. So 
The other world definitely earned my respect. The historical society was cool. I did like the all the paintings, everything that was involved with that. Um, it was very short lived because then you just walk down a path and they kept the sounds of the pyramid head or whatever that groaning sound is when you're walking down the infinite amount of stair steps to get down to where you need to go uh, in the prison. Uh, but I thought historical society looked really cool from the outside and I was like, oh my God, here we go. This is it. And it was a really exciting moment for me to get to a historical society. Um, Especially with the nice, uh, beautiful ambiance walking to the historical society. That was really cool. Um, but prior to historical society, there is actually a secret, I don't say a secret location, but the location doesn't serve a, doesn't serve like a, uh, cutscene purpose or a main driven purpose inside the game. There's more of an Easter egg location, which was the Pete's Bowl Rama, where we have, where we actually see, um, Laura and, and, um, and Eddie together eating pizza well eddie's the one eating pizza in the original and they're at the bowling alley and so you see angela there in the original just hanging out with him asking questions and stuff and eddie's just like shut up let me eat my pizza and then you get that famous line when eddie when uh james comes in looking for laura to uh ask eddie and and eddie's just sitting there sitting there eating pizza and then you know you get james over he's like why are you eating pizza bro this town is full of must monsters like what are you doing because he's trying to he's trying to ask him to go find laura and, and he was like nah i'm not having that i'm just gonna eat my pizza dude um but yeah so they they didn't have that in the in the remake the remake they they made they did a similar uh take on it but they made it at a um movie theater and so and the other thing is they had him eating what I thought was popcorn when I first played through this. So Eddie Eddie was sitting at the at the movie theater eating something from the bucket and I was making a really like really nasty sound and he was just like licking something. And I thought it was like a popcorn bucket with like butter and he was just like licking butter out of a popcorn bucket. Because I was thinking like, well, he was you know, I was thinking like, oh maybe the movie theater popcorn, but nah, it was a whole big gallon of bowl of ice cream. Like it was a big thing of ice cream. He was like licking ice cream. He literally had melted ice cream in a in a in a in a popcorn bucket and he was just eating it like bro like what is going on with this dude they made him so bizarre and i i love it but at the same time i was like okay uh and then but yeah so getting a little off track so going back to the remake and uh the remake peace Bolorama is just it's still there it still has the same layout and everything and there's actually a save option in there which i thought was interesting i don't know why they have a save option there but they did and it might have been the original i don't know if the original had a save option there but anyways uh when you go up to the pizza it actually was like a it's a glimpse which they added to this game it's glimpses are basically nostalgic pieces that that bloober team wanted to acknowledge and um honor from the original game and they placed multiple of them inside the remake which i love uh i really wish that it was a part of the game still but it's okay we we can move forward we can move forward uh but yeah so that was cool. And and uh James in the remake actually says the quote is like, How could someone eat sit here or how could someone eat pizza? They're this town is full of monsters. So they kept the they kept the line, it was an Easter egg, really cool. And then the other Easter egg was that you still can go down the bowling lane to get a health item. If you didn't know that, in the original they had that, and I think it was either a health item or it was ammunition. Um, but yeah, so go back and play through again and you'll find it. Uh for the prison. I thought the prison was cool. I liked how they had so many, like everything was kind of basically new in the prison. There were, there were certain areas, I think leading into the Lambreth, the Lambreth, they also kind of changed up a little bit, but it was still kind of like the same thing. Um, I like, I, I the one thing I really like about the prison, the Lambreth and, and the original, it was very confusing because like sometimes you would miss the map. And when I first played through on Silent Hill 2 in the original, I missed the map for the, the prison. And I got completely fucked because I was so lost in there and I kept on going around in circles. And it's a really small map, but like if you don't have the map, it's going to be difficult. Well, they made it pretty easy for you to acquire the map in the prison because it was right there in front of you. And then you just go through and you follow the steps. And so they made the, I like, they did the prison and the Lambreth a lot better than they did the original. The original was very confusing, but they made it a lot more straightforward in the remake. Still difficult, but good. Um, And then uh, we'll also go to the um easter egg so they had that one room where the guy mumbles something i forget what he says but uh i think it's like oh yeah i don't remember but he says something weird and it's inside of this like ritual room in one of the prison cells they kept that they also kept the noose uh hangman's puzzle uh they changed it up a little bit uh they put it inside the courtyard they made it bigger uh so that was really cool and if you fail to pull the right noose you went down and were um trapped and being attacked and swarmed by enemies which i did not like but it played into the tension and i i agree with her decision for that 
It, it made the game really tense, and that's what I was asking for when I wanted this wanted to play this game. And then finally, we get the Lakeside View Hotel. If I missed something, by the way, my bad. Uh, but yeah, so the Lakeside View Hotel. I um, I don't even think that's the name of the hotel. Whatever the Lake View Hotel, whatever it's called. That last um part of the game was really well done. The hotel looked beautiful. They made it bigger. Um, like the they expanded upon it a lot. They added new puzzles. My favorite part about the, the about the hotel it was the new surprise mini boss that we got, which was I forget what you call it, but it has the flesh lips on it. It's the tall looking thing that hangs on the and you see it in the labyrinth and you also see it in the other world on the cages below. And they really didn't do that monster justice in the original. It was more of just there to kind of be like creepy, like kind of mysterious, like what is this thing? Uh, but they didn't really do much with that in the in the remake in the original. But in the remake, they made it. They they brought it into like three or four different scenes, and then they made it an actual boss fight inside the hotel when you go to get a key from or get the Cinderella from the fireplace, dude. And like when that cutscene happened, I was like, there's gonna be no, I didn't even think it was gonna be a boss because usually you would think that, uh, you know, following some a random cutscene like this, it looks like there's gonna be a boss. And um, yeah, there actually was a boss and the thing flew into the room and you got to see its thing in all its glory, man. It was cool because I was like, I always wonder what this thing looked like and how big it was, the size of it. And they also added the part where you drop all your items off in the in the elevator and you have to go down and, and do a couple of things to get a key you actually have more of those monsters and you and not only that but you also are vulnerable so what do you do you got to sneak around and they made james animated to where he looked kind of look a little scared a little vulnerable and so we got multiple um like encounters with this monster and and then they throw us they throw us for a fucking loop by making it a boss fight like holy shit like this is crazy and i was like i was like surprised i i didn't expect that at all so a lot of new surprises in this game and that plays into going into our boss fights I, I would say that my favorite boss fight was abstract daddy but then i think that this mini boss also was a really good one all the rest of the bosses felt great um they expanded upon them they made them better and i have no really complaints about those um I think they could have done the first boss fight with the pyramid head a little bit differently. I think they could have made it a little bit more difficult, but they kind of made it where you just basically shoot pyramid head. And he was kind of like, if you play on like easier setting, it's a lot easier. Like it's, it's so much easier. Like you just like the, like people who played probably never got injured when you play on hard, you get injured, but it was still wasn't that bad. I know that's an introduction to the boss fights, but they should have at least made it like like scarier i don't know um but yeah so that's pretty much that <laughs> oh man got allergies so i'm trying to like get through this without fucking coughing or seizing um the balance of health and ammo i think they did a really good job with the balance of that i think you utilize most of the um most of your ammo and health it was a balance as in like you when you had boss fights you would use most of it and by the time you were done using all of your resources you were if you were just playing casually and not competitively then you were about to then you were pretty much done with the boss fight the boss was was done um and finding health items and ammo uh they did a good job balancing that um there wasn't one time i felt where i was like kind of like so dry on shit um there there were some instances but they weren't that frustrating it was just more like you gotta learn how to like balance this stuff combat felt great uh no clipping for me uh there were a couple bugs with the monsters with like the way they they looked i know like the mannequin doll was kind of flimsy and one of the bugs um but overall like every, every most hits connected um some of them were just misses uh the gun felt great and so yeah nothing to complain there uh puzzles i like the old and new ones they were really good like i said my favorite one was from the hospital and then how about like a collect a variety of collectibles and Easter eggs? I like how they added more notes and memos and they give you like Polaroids you can collect. They're basically like the strange photos and that's achievement you can get. So I thought that was cool. Uh, the glimpses or paying tribute to the game. thought that was awesome. Um, and then we, we kind of pretty much covered everything else. Oh yeah, they also added the old Silent Hill 2 map annotation by James in the original. You can find that in the town right outside of finishing the part with uh, talking to Angela in the cemetery. So they have an old Silent Hill 2 map you can find. That's an Easter egg. But other than that, though, I think that was pretty much it for that. Uh, game endings, I haven't gone through all of them yet. I did the UFO one. They changed the UFO one a little bit. So if you haven't gotten the ending, definitely try it. Check it out. They changed uh, part of it. So it's really funny. Um, 
<clears throat> and then I did, I got the end water ending for my first playthrough. It was really sad. They changed that up too. Um, but I'm still working to get the rest of the uh, remaining ending. They added two secret endings. I, I did not look it up or didn't want didn't want to get spoiled. So I'm look, working to play through all the rest of it. And then once I'm done, I'll let you know my thoughts. Uh, I really was disappointed that they didn't have Born From A Wish uh, DLC included in the in the in the release however there's there's a possible chance that they may come out with a dlc for this game not saying it's going to happen i really hope that it does because i think it pays a purpose they did put an easter egg inside the remake uh main storyline where you walk up to baldwin mansion with maria maria makes a comment on it so that kind of makes me worried that they're not going to do that but i really hope they do they, they have a great success with this. They had a great re re uh, launch with this game and they sold over 1 million copies, which I'm really uh, happy for. Congratulations, Blooper team. You guys knocked it out of the park. I appreciate you guys and everything you do. I know you all have families and you have sacrificed so much for this game and I appreciate everything you did for it and the amount of skill, art, time, and everything you put into this game. I, I appreciate that as a fan and um, thank you for being a fan as well. My conclusion for this remake is that Overall, the game superseded my expectations, and it was far, and all the pros far outweighed the negatives. Pros, the game looks and feels amazing. Um, for cinematic, it would look cinematic like. Took full advantage of Unreal Engine Five. New beefier locations that are familiar and refreshing to the vets. Boss fights were more complex and add additional phases to the boss fights. Difficulty was ramped up even more, uh, feeling more competitive. And it felt like a, the survival aspect was real and made me feel vulnerable and very scared at times. Hard mode was extremely difficult, unlike the original where you could just run past monsters. The remake makes you act in a more strategic manner, balancing your ammo and health, so sneaking around, uh, <clears throat> choosing not to engage with certain monsters. Uh, boss fights felt great and extinguished all the ammo and health prior to beating them which made it feel like you were in a dire situation, which is, that's what a boss fight's for, and feeling like you're fighting for your life. Basic. The only issues were some of the performance glitches, such as with the mannequin dolls, visual stuttering on the stairs. When you're on the sitting on stairs and looking around, it stutters sometimes. Even in elevator, you're stuttering a little bit. Uh, not being able to pick up health and ammo on the final boss fight, that was a very fucking um, frustrating part of the game. Uh, a lot of people I saw that were streaming will also suffer from that frustration. But yeah, so there's a wall on the final boss fight where you can't pick up a fucking health drink. And I was literally desperate to pick that up because I was playing on hard. It was very difficult to beat that final boss, but I did it after a couple of tries. Um, I did I did appreciate that they didn't make us play the whole sequence over. Like, because of if there's three phases, they didn't make us go back to phase one. They let us stay on phase three if we were on phase three. If it was a Souls game, and if they if, it, if they had built it like a Souls game, then we would have been, I would have been completely fucked because I don't think I would have beaten them. Um, but... I think the delivery lines, another negative thing, the delivery lines with Angela and Maria were not great. They were pretty, they sounded, it sounded like they did, they, they basically recorded in one or two takes. And they were like, okay, you guys are fine. Like they, they felt like they were afraid to like criticize these guys. And basically there were some scenes where Maria just sounded like she was falling asleep when she was re recording her voice or the actress was falling asleep when she was re recording her voice. And sometimes it felt motionless. There was no like sense of anger or depression or sadness in the voices. Angela sounded more raspy and her the lines were delivered awkwardly and not the awkward sense of Silent Hill 2 original, but as in like, they, it felt like they were trying, they were either not trying hard enough or trying too hard. Um, there were scenes where they were great. Like I'm saying that it was, it was kind of like a roller coaster for these cutscenes. Like sometimes they just nailed it. Sometimes they didn't, but, but Angela and Maria were not consistent. James was consistent. Laura was consistent. Eddie Mon uh, yeah, now, Eddie Munson, oh my god, Stranger Things 5, Season 5, guys, next year, Stranger Things Season 5, coming out next year, um, but yeah, no, Eddie Dabrowski, uh, solid, so I think they did a great job with those, um, and then also sometimes, like, apartments were slow and drawn out, so yeah, again, like, these things, uh, a lot of these areas were beefier and more stuff was added, but the pacing was kind of off, it, it slowed down t the game too much, I feel like it, they could have maybe shortened it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, especially when you're playing the game that's like almost brand new and they added so much new stuff. Uh, the apartments took forever. Uh, hotel, uh, the hospital also kind of took forever. But then when you got to the, like the prison Lambeth, that didn't take that long. And then the hotel really didn't take that long either. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's pretty much it. So my verdict for this, uh, I'm, I was going to give it a 10 out of 10. But now that I, do I dove deeper into it and had my conversation with Silent Lounge, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I think it's up there. Uh, with Silent Hill 4 and 
Silent Hill 3 remake. I really didn't like, si- oh, not sorry, not the Silent Hills. Um, the Resident Evil remakes. Uh, so Resident Evil 4 and 2. I didn't really like Resident Evil 3 remake, but just to compare Silent Hill with uh, Resident Evil, I think Resident Evil uh, 2 and 4 um, had the same satisfaction as I did with Silent Hill 2's remake. So I think they are comparable, um, and I would have to rate it a 9 out of 10. I think that's very good. Um, it's very hard to really achieve a 10 out of 10. I don't think it's even possible for a remake because we all know the originals are the 10 out of the 10s, but I think it stands on its own and, and the remake, the original and the remake can stand on its own and they don't have to be compared. I think they both are great in their own sense and I will still probably go back and play the original, but just to get that original vibe again. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate everybody. Um, and this is going to be unedited, uncut, so if you are mad that I keep on calling Eddie Dombrowski, Eddie Munson, uh, I feel sorry for you because you should be a Stranger Things fan because it's an awesome show. Uh, yeah, but that's pretty much it. So I will talk to you guys uh, and see you guys sometime soon. Peace.